This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. And aloha. Welcome to another edition of uh, Hawaii in Uniform. I'm your host, Calvin Griffin. And I uh, always start out with the same introduction. For those of you who haven't seen the program before, here we talk about a lot of things that um, affect our veterans community. And uh, what we try to do is connect the dots. There's a lot of different programs out there that uh, many veterans don't know about. And we're going to try to be informative about uh, what we present to you today. Uh, today I have two guests. One is a call-in, Mr. Larry Mays, who's with the student, Veterans Student Organization and also Mr. Jeremy Gwynn, who's with the uh, Fleet Reserve Association. And um, uh, Jeremy was on the program before. But right now, to get right into it, I want to introduce Mr. Mays. Uh, Mr. Mays, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you for having me. Good. Uh, may I call you Larry? Please, don't, don't worry. OK. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about your organization? As I'm in the intro, as I mentioned in the past also, that there's a lot of different programs out there that the veterans may not be aware of, and what we're trying to do is connect the dots with um, the different groups out there. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself and also a little bit about the organization? Um, my name is uh, Larry Mays. I'm the uh, vice president of the Student Veteran Organization. Uh, I've been a student here at uh, University of Hawaii for two years now. Uh, I'm a triple major in um, management information systems, management, and human resources. And our group is a uh, student veterans organization, and we're a mix of veterans uh, who have served in all branches of the, uh, of the United States Air Force, Armed Forces, excuse me. Mm -hmm. And um, what we do here in our office, we advocate, support, and mentor all of our veterans, our student veterans, and try to, try to give them the resources they need to be successful students. Great. And how, uh, how much time did you spend in the military? <coughs> yeah. uh, I just spent uh, four years in the military. Uh -huh. um, uh, I uh, got out in 2013 and immediately started school. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, just uh, back reference also, uh, where are you originally from? You mentioned uh, Memphis? Or? Yes, I'm uh, originally from uh, Memphis, Tennessee. Uh -huh. um, once I joined the military, I ended up, uh, I did a, a small stint at the uh, Tennessee National Guard, uh -huh. and then I transferred here to Hawaii, to the Hawaii National Guard, and then after that, went active duty from there. Okay. Are you still in the reserve system, or are you completely out? I'm completely out. Okay. With well, the organization, how did that start, and uh, could you get a little bit more detail about what your mission statement is? Well, the organization started just with a bunch of veter veterans who were looking for more resources on campus. It's actually, it's actually a conversation that uh, that came that has come up a lot. As you know, University of Hawaii has a rich history in uh, serving veterans. So, so our mission our mission is to, to our mission is to continue to bring quality service to to veterans, give them the resource they need. No matter what their stipulations is, uh, we do the best we can to make sure they get everything they need. Okay. Uh, some of the resources you're talking about, it's like job placement or what kind? Of, also, the mentoring program. I want to talk about that also. But um, is there anything to do with job placement or anything like that? Uh, well, we actually have a, a voc rehab specialist uh, here here in office at our office of Better Student Services, mm -hmm. which we're uh, partnered with. Uh, so if uh, like the the, the voc rehab is uh, is, is basically to help students, veteran students, who uh, have a certain like uh, may have an ailment or something like that, that can keep them from being employed to reach to reach a uh, degree path to where it will help them take care of their family mm -hmm. by uh, by uh, by uh, being qualified for a certain job. Okay, so with the voc rehab, they don't necessarily have to be enrolled as a student as long as they're a veteran. They actually have to be enrolled as a student. Oh, yes. enrolled as a student. Okay. All right. Um, so, what is the future for the organization? Um, how do you see it growing? How many members do you have roughly right now? All right, now we have around uh, twenty to thirty members. Uh, we have we have a, a large executive board that uh, that are, are are dedicated to all of our to all of our uh, members. Uh -huh. uh, we're also starting to mentor other people too as well. We just started to get that program going as well. Yeah. Uh, the support that you are you getting a lot of support from the uh, university and the faculty members? Yes, and um, also also feel like uh, there's a lot of loopholes in the system here that we have to uh, get together. 
but we, we're making the right contact, and it's, it's coming along uh, slowly but surely. Okay. Also, you mentioned that there's an event that's going on today that you're currently hosting. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Because there may be some people out there that may not be aware of what's happening and might want to come down and join you to get more information. Yes, here at the uh, KLC building on uh, campus at the University of Hawaii in Manoa, they're having an uh, open house in celebration for the Queen's birthday. And uh, all the offices here are open for students or uh, aspiring students, veterans, to come down and get more information about these resources that are contained in this building. Okay. A lot of people don't. A lot of people come to this building mainly to uh, register and uh, for financial aid, but they don't understand there's other resources here too as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I tell you, what, is there a contact number that they somebody can reach you with? If they're a little bit confused about directions or you know any other things, any other information they may need before they go down. Oh yes, you can uh, call me uh, in my office at 808 mm -hmm. 2192 or you can call me my, on my direct line at 901, that's the area code, 901-634-3831. Okay, if you can just mention it one more time, a little bit more slowly for those who are trying to get a pencil out there or a crayon. Okay, sorry. Um, uh, you can reach me at the office at 808-956-2192. Mm -hmm. Or my personal contact, area code 901 634 uh -huh. 3831. Great. Okay. As I mentioned, we have Mr. Guen here, uh, Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy is also, you mentioned about uh, you were with the student organization back on the main line? Yes. Um, I was part of the startup for the uh, student veterans organization at the University of Southern Miss down in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, it's, a, it's a great organization. Uh, yeah. They do a lot. They do a real a lot. Great. Larry, with all the different veterans out there uh, that migrate back and forth or the different parts of the country, are you in uh, touch with uh, some of the other uh, student organizations out there, veteran student organizations? At other campuses? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, at this moment, no, but we, we plan on uh, reaching out starting here locally because, uh -huh. like us uh, being at, at US, the University of Illinois, we're supposed to be the staple of all these organizations. And uh, different campuses like uh, Leeward, KCC, they all have uh, veteran organizations. So we, we want to be the ones at the forefront showing, showing, uh, showing those other smaller organizations how it should be mm -hmm. and also giving them also a bridge to when they get ready to transfer over here mm -hmm. or they have a connection here as well. All right. Uh, do you guys have a uh, Facebook or website or some other form of social media that can help that you're using to <coughs> disseminate the information? Uh, yes, they can uh, catch us on uh, Facebook, uh -huh. uh, Student Veteran Organization dash UH Manoa on Facebook. Okay. And what's planned for the future as far as, um, again, uh, some of the resources that are available. Um, again, with the mentoring program, how does that work? Our mentoring program will be uh, uh, upper, upper graduate students uh, taking on undergraduate students uh, that are new here. Uh -huh. um, Whatever they need. Sometimes people might need uh, help with their schoolwork. They might just need a, 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 a here to listen to uh, what's going on in their life, you know. So we're, we're here to support in any way that we can. Uh -huh. Okay. I know also that there's a lot of veterans out there that um, sometimes they get misinformation or not enough information before they transition out. Uh, is there any um, counseling programs like that can uh, enlighten them to what's happening with the, or their educational benefits that um, you know, may not be widely known or the information not widely disseminated? In case I've, 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 from, from, uh, from my experience, I've, uh, a lot of people end up uh, not knowing how to use their, um, use, use their different um, uh, options uh, with, uh, with the 9-11 with with bill, uh, the voc rehab, and, and a lot of people are not, are not getting the actual all the resources they need. So there, there, are, there, are, there are plenty of services available. Yeah. Um, and if anybody wants to contact me, it'd be a lot easier for me to, uh, <laughs> to talk to them one-on-one -on -one about it. Right. Everybody's situation is different. Uh -huh. And uh, I personally uh, thrive on helping people. So if, if, if I can't figure it out, I'm going to find somebody who can't figure it out. And, and that's what, that's what, that's what uh, makes, me, makes me keep going. All right. Like I said, it's all about connecting the dots. Jeremy, what, what do you know about, I mean, are you familiar with any programs or anything that's happening to enlighten the veterans? Well, um, I, actually, I'm, I'm a member or 
actually in the program with the uh, Voc Rehab right now as a uh, graduate student at uh, Emory Real Aeronautical University. Mm -hmm. um, so I've got some um, background, some knowledge on that, and actually I'd be very interested in, in, your, um, in your mentorship program as a graduate student and working with uh, undergraduates. Um, some of the other organizations that are here locally um, that could really utilize, uh, especially student veterans, are, are organizations like the Fleet Reserve Association, um, also Team Rubicon. Um, Team Rubicon is, mm. stood up here a couple of years ago. I was uh, part of that, uh, standing that unit up. Um, currently, we've got members deployed to Hurricane Harvey uh, along the uh, Gulf Coastal areas of Texas, Louisiana. Um, Team Rubicon is, is widely known across the United States. Uh, a couple of years ago, actually last year, uh, we became international, so now we can deploy uh, to natural disasters and emergency relief across the world. Okay. Right. You know, we'll get more information about that anyhow, because mm -hmm. that was, that was interesting. Okay. Uh, Larry, is there anything else that you'd like to discuss? Uh, that's, that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, if, uh, if anybody needs me, uh, my, my, my contact information is uh, still uh, area code 901-634-3831. Mm -hmm. Or you can email me at L as in Lima, M as in Mike, A Y S, 901 at Hawaii.edu. Okay. And one more time, just in case. Uh, area code 901 634 3831. And my email is L M A Y S 901 at Hawaii.edu. Great. Okay. Well, Mr. Mays, it's been a real pleasure, and uh, like I said, we're looking forward to doing a follow-up program. Maybe what thing we can do here to help you disseminate information or, you know, again, help the veterans connect the dots, we'd be more than happy to do so. But uh, thank you for your efforts, and thank you for your, you know, uh, service to our country. Thank you for your time and this oh, opportunity. One other thing before I let you go, and uh, before we go. Uh, as far as the female veterans, what are there any special programs in place for them that you're aware of? Because that's another issue that uh, uh, seems to be not getting enough um, attention as far as with the, some of the special needs for our female troops. Uh, do you have anything on that? Um, I know that uh, all the all the answer right now, I know our, uh, all of our services is, is, uh, is, is, uh, is, is uh, gender proof. Um, gender it's, it's not even male. Yeah, gender, gender equal. Uh -huh. So uh, there's not, there's not a, a certain, a certain um, a certain specific for female assaults for, for female troops yeah. just yet, but if they if they need anything, like I said, we'll if we don't have the resources, we will, we, will, we will definitely point them in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, because in the past we uh, came across some information about uh, some of the challenges that uh, some of our uh, female soldiers and veterans have encountered that um, have not been adequately addressed. You know, not by yourself, but as far as with the the system in general. So uh, that's why I was curious about it. Maybe if you knew something that um, may be in place, but I'm quite sure that, you know, as you expressed, that you're going to do everything you can for all veterans, regardless of their gender. But, um, yeah, we'll, um, we're doing some more research on that, and, but we'll definitely keep in touch and find out how things go with uh, you and the organization. And as I mentioned before, do what we can to help support getting the information out. That's what we're here for to help, 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 help out the case support. So if, if, if that issue comes up, uh -huh. we're, we're behind it 100%. Great. Okay. Well, we're looking forward to some time in the future having you in the studio. But again, thank you for your time. I know you're pretty busy down there trying to, um, what you're dealing with your event. But thanks again. Thank you. All right. Have a nice day. You too. Okay. So, Mr. Mays, <clears throat> and um, like I say, a lot of things is going on anyhow. And we're going to, I don't know if we're going to take a break pretty soon or what. But, um, one minute? Okay. Uh, we're going to go into more detail about what's happening and about uh, so we take our break here, but um, I'm quite sure that you have some information that you can share to enlighten some of our veterans also. Always. All right. But anyhow, like I said, you're here with um, Hawaiian Uniform, and um, we'll take our break, and we'll come back and continue our conversation with Mr. Jeremy Gwynn, and uh, always looking for feedback. So we'll take our break. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. But I have a story, and I don't know where to start. I feel alone in a crowd. I can't sleep. I feel overwhelmed. I don't even know who I am anymore. I still have nightmares. 
I can't live like this anymore. I'm really not so good. But are you ready to listen? I'm Helen Dora Hyden, the host of Voice of the Veteran, seen here live every Thursday afternoon at 1 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. As a fellow veteran and veterans advocate with over 23 years experience serving veterans, active duty, and family members, I hope to educate everyone on benefits and accessibility services by inviting professionals in the field to appear on the show. In addition, I hope to plan on inviting guest veterans to talk about their concerns and possibly offer solutions. As we navigate and work together through issues, we can all benefit. Please join me every Thursday at 1 p.m. for the Voice of the Veteran. Aloha! Okay, and you're back with uh, Hawaii in Uniform. I'm your host, Calvin. And uh, we got Mr. Nguyen, Jerry, I mean Jeremy. How's it going again today? Oh, it's pretty good, pretty good. Okay, I know you were in a program before and uh, one of the issues that you're dealing with, you're the legislative chairman for the Fleet Reserve Association. Correct. How's that going and what contacts are you making right now or what responses are you getting from uh, some of our elected officials as far as the veterans issues? Well, currently, um, like, like I said, I recently returned to the island in, the, uh, in December. Mm -hmm. um, since then, I've been active, um, basically keeping tabs on what's going on at the uh, at the government, federal government level. Yeah. Um, recently, they've passed the um, um, the Modernization Act, um, which is they're trying to um, attack the backlog issue of veterans that are reapplying for either upgrades in their disabilities or the like, mm -hmm. or adding disabilities or adding service-related injuries uh, to their initial claims. Yeah. Um, so they've been able to um, reduce it from 2000 and I want to say eight numbers, which was around 600,000 cases backlogged, mm -hmm. and now they're down to around 83,000. Yeah. So they've been able to modernize um, that whole process right now and go outside. So that's one of the things we're keeping uh, uh, tabs on. Um, <clears throat> uh, the Fleet Reserve Association, you know, we also advocate not just for the uh, Navy, the Marines, or the Coast Guard, but we advocate across the board. I yeah. mean. Um, and this goes back to the original conversation that we had the first time that I was on the program where we were talking about what's the veterans conversation like? Is it, is it happening at what level? Mm -hmm. um, so we're trying to, just like with Mr. Uh, with Larry earlier, you know, we find that a lot of times with veterans, you know, if you have something to say, you know, I, I'm willing to take your word for it more than I would maybe somebody else. Mm -hmm. Just because, if, especially if it relates to veterans, um, affairs or veterans dealings or anything yeah um, so those are where the conversations are happening yeah well the compass you know we have conversations <clears throat> a lot of time with the conversations we have offline we talk vet to vet you know mm -hmm. and uh, we you know some um, similar issues that we all share in one way or the other you know uh, some of the things of course are happening with the VA uh, we, that's a running battle that's going on all the time you know uh, there's a lot of good as I mentioned in the past there's a lot of good people who work for the VA but sometimes systemically there's a lot of problems that are not being addressed because for whatever reason they can't you know mm -hmm. or they won't be addressed you know hopefully with the new administration the way it's been touted is that they're seeming that you know, they're going to go ahead and put new things in place that will help expedite um, or address certain issues concerning the veterans anyhow so I know they have a hotline that's being set up um, here in Hawaii um, I think for the most part you know a lot of people are comfortable but that doesn't still mean that there can't be some improvements in the system over here. Especially one thing, we wanted, we don't have a veterans hospital over here. You know, we have the different the clinics over here or whatever. But um, I think that that's another issue that uh, is long standing and go, goes a long way back anyhow. But again, connecting the dots, like I said, between those who represent us and those who are actually out there who have served, uh, you know, their country. Mm -hmm. and the issues that we're dealing with and one of the things as I mentioned with um, Larry is there's a lot of things that are still happening with our you know special needs for our female veterans you know a lot of issues that are not being addressed because one of the things I came across recently there was a documentary called The Invisible War I don't mm -hmm. know if you ever heard of that one okay yep. this is about the sexual harassment of uh, female troops you know and it's, it really is more extensive than people think you know and the way that some of our female veterans have been treated in the past it's really despicable to be honest with you you know 
and I say that's one of the things that they really don't talk about. You know, I know there's a lot of, um, again, not singling out or trying to make any special part of the veterans community special, mm -hmm. but there are needs that needs to be addressed. You know, in certain cases, and I think that's definitely one of them. And I recommend if you're out, if you're out there, go to the library or pull uh, pull it up on the uh, internet. It's called Invisible Wars, and uh, it's very enlightening, or you know, and sad in a way about uh, the issue, what's being addressed, and the long-range effect, not only on the female veteran, and again, as far as with the uh, the rapes in the military, that's another thing they really don't want to talk about, this male-female, you know, and um, it's like, um, you know, again, one of those things like, well, we'll talk about it offline, or, you know, at the time when it does hit the press, if there's something that can't be, I say, buried, then they come up with these different programs, you know. But this is something that's a constant, you know. And I believe that most of the male members of the um, veterans community wholeheartedly support, you know, what's going on with the, um, as far as our female counterparts, you know, what we can do. But I think a lot of people are not aware of the situation, the extensiveness of it, you know. And a lot of that has to do with the systemic problems, those who represent us, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's what sometimes like, is really disheartening and really discouraging and really it bothers the heck out of me to um, find out that the, the problem has been identified but not properly addressed. You know, we do have people that's well, with a lot of problems. I, I definitely agree with you on that. Uh, a lot of it has to stem from, as you stated, the systemic issues within the military and, and it comes with a, a, a certain amount of complacency yeah. and complacency breeds contempt. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's what we've had you know, over the past couple of years. Yeah. Um, but it also, there's, a, there's an element of, of being visible. There's, a, there's the element of, of being transparent, mm -hmm. which um, as you and I both know, and, and any veteran listening to this program, you know, at a certain point in time, it's just like, look, don't BS me anymore. Just mm -hmm. shoot me straight yeah. and let me go on about my business and do yeah. what I have to do. And as the conversations that we were talking about earlier and having them offline and everything, okay, we can have them offline, but at a certain point in time, there needs to be some acknowledgement. And that acknowledgement comes in the form of, of being out here in the public eye and saying, hey, these do exist, yeah. and these are what we're, this is what we're trying to do to correct that. Yeah. And that will give us as veterans some, some sort of saying, you know, hey, at least we're trying. You know. Yeah, because uh, some of the, excuse me, I'm watering up here, not because I'm getting too emotional, but the thing is, um, yeah, we do go to the different council meetings and things of that nature where they do have different forums or, you know, uh, so-called uh, open house uh, conversations. Mm -hmm. But when he really gets to the heavy issues, it's like uh, the representatives from the VA and a few other places, like, okay, let's talk about this offline. With me, there is no offline. Yes. You need to go ahead and address the issue. If, like, say, if it concerns me, if it brings me, you know, to bring the members of my organization up to speed on certain things, we need to talk about this in an open conversation, you know, where everybody, because if I'm concerned about it, definitely you're concerned about it, or you know somebody that is definitely being affected, you know. So this offline stuff has got to stop. We have to be completely honest with what's going on. There's a time and a place on how to address certain issues, but you know, to try to just say, ignore it and think it's going to go away, it ain't going to happen. No, you know? no, I mean, and, and <clears throat> the simple fact of the matter is whatever individuals or, or groups or whatever they want to sit there and say, well, let's talk about it offline. Mm -hmm. Number one, that tells me, well, you don't have your ducks in a row. Yeah. You're not up to speed on the information and you have actually no concept of what's going on. So yeah. now you've got to go back and chase down uh, leads and information and stuff like that. But if you come to us and ask us, maybe that we have as other veterans, um, some ideas on it. So, and that, that goes back to leadership. It's just like, look, I'm not here to tell you how to do it. I'm here to take in your information so we can all figure out a way out of this. Yeah. Because we all got ourselves into this in one way or the other. Yeah. Well, that's the problem as far as the common sense approach, not only, like say, with, with the veterans issues, but the much, the much larger scale in general, what's mm -hmm. happening with our country, where common sense seems to go out the window. It's all about special interests. And when you have people, like say, that are especially involved with the veterans community, who have a vested interest in just keeping their job, you know? It's then, and we've seen that in the past, we've been discussed briefly, but not again to the extent we have people who, they can't be fired, you know, because they're either unionized or whatever, not that I have anything against unions, but there's a time and a place for everything. Mm -hmm. The main thing is making sure that the job is done for our veterans. There's no excuse whatsoever, you know? And the thing is the way they play musical chairs in certain circumstances where you just, when you screw up here, 
we're just going to ship you off someplace else, you know? Yes, yeah. You know, um, I think, uh, um, well, uh, retired General uh, James Mattis, uh, current Secretary of Defense, mm -hmm. uh, recently stated that, you know, there's, uh, there's a job that we have on the active duty side, um, and that's to go out and defend. Um, and he wasn't apologizing, I don't think, so much for, you know, the way the war is going, but he was also bringing uh, to the forefront the issues that we have within our own country. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, that's where us as veterans can actually step in and say, you know what, hey, we, we understand these problems as well, and we have different perspectives. So, like the students' veterans organizations, um, the other organizations that are out there, you know, that are being born, because we have a lot of new veterans organizations that are being born out of this, this brunt, yeah. this weight that we've been carrying for 30 years now. Um, and then you've got other organizations like the Fleet Reserve Association, like the VFW, that are, that are needing new blood. Yeah. Um, and that's one of the issues that we have at the Fleet Reserve Association here locally, is uh, we need new blood coming in. But at the same time, this gives us opportunity to actually get out in the communities and, and voice our opinions, voice our concerns, not just for ourselves, yeah. but for everybody involved, because yeah. everybody's going to, you know, well, like going be through affected. Yeah, going through revitalization, because one of the things you mentioned, of course, with the Fleet Reserve, I'm familiar with them anyhow, but with a lot of other groups anyhow, you have the old guard, a lot of people yes. that are in place that, be honest with you, they shouldn't be there any longer, mm -hmm. because their interest is mainly, is like, Again, the holding pattern where I'm here, I know what's best, you know, and that's all it is to it. That's the reason why we're not getting, they're not getting a lot of influx from the, um, um, from the younger community. Yes. We're down to it, the wire, like say, mm -hmm. uh, for about a minute anyhow. But this is something, like I said, definitely I'd like to get a comeback. We're going to talk about this a little bit more. But as far as with the different groups, the veterans out there, then we need to connect the dots. If these p certain systems are not going to support us, then we need to work together. That's a very important anyhow. Anyhow, as I mentioned, we're getting down to the wire in 10, se in 10 seconds or less. <laughs> anything you want to say? Uh, mahalo again. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, it was a great meeting, Larry. Uh, everybody stay tuned. You know, keep coming back to the show. We got more information. Great. Okay. Thank you very much. Mahalo. And um, until that time.